What are you doing? Oh, jeez. Hey, yo, my friend. You know what time it is? It's time for Cascade to go away while everybody wonders what he's doing. Oh, well, hi, everybody. It's Robert Earl here out at the Eco Ranch Sustainable Living Education Center with Cascade the Wonder Dog, who wandered away. <clears throat> Anyhow, this is a vlog for the end of uh, July. Uh, I'm going to throw a few little things in it. We've been working really hard, but mainly everything is going into the meat chickens, and they're coming up on an end. They've got nine more days to live, and then it's off with their heads. Oh, now I have a few extra dollars. But for now, what we've been doing is entertaining guests. Now, I had I had Ruben back. I talked about him in the last video. Ruben and I had a great time, and we went to Boquillas, um, Mexico, which uh, if you look at the map of Big Bend National Park, Boquillas is down there, and it's someplace everybody wants to go. Don't go there. Just don't. It's just not worth it. Stay away from Boquillas. Uh, you can't even buy any booze and bring it back, so I mean, it's just not, I mean, if you can't buy booze down there, what's the use of going? Uh, and let's see, Ruben was here, and our friend Jeremy, who uh, worked on that beautiful arch by my chimney, Jeremy came back for a few days, and he said, you know, he said, you can't come to the desert without screening dirt, so Jeremy screened us a bunch of dirt. And then I had a third visitor come through here that we did some work, and I'm going to introduce you to him and show you what he and I did, and that is Jeff. Jeff came from Dallas, and uh, Jeff, are you, where are you? Where are you? Ah, there he is. Hey. Hello. Hello. He came from Dallas, uh, looking at you know property and that around here, and spent he spent a, a week with us here. Uh, what did you think of it? I loved it. It was great. Everybody it was really says that. It was, it was uh, honestly, it was the work wasn't as hard as I expected it to be. No, you're working fun. with it. It was good. An yeah, old man and a they fat man. They say <laughs> an old fat man. <laughs> no, it, it was good. Good work. We did a lot of work. We worked hard. Yep. And speaking uh, of work, you want to tell them about some of the work we did? Sure. All right. Well, we yes. worked on finishing this mower. You guys remember, Alex and I got about this high. Jeff. Yep. So where you can see the, it's a little bit wet. So it's still drying and stuff. So we start from here and went all the way up. Uh, you can see it's like one day, two days, three days. And, uh, finished it up. Uh, it's it's uh, nasty it, looking. Yeah, it looks it. nasty because we're going to plaster over all these bottles so they don't have to look pretty. The ones over here are exposed uh, and they've been pointed and stuff. So these you'll see, but these you'll never see. So now that in itself is a lot of work, but that's not all Jeff did. Let's show you what else he did. And we're back in the bathroom, but really, who doesn't love being in their bathroom, right? Uh, Jeff, what did you do in here? So. Here, what we had was uh, you guys had an earthquake, and it knocked out some bottles, uh, which happens. So it was just a few bottles. I think it was seven or eight bottles we did all together, and uh, we took the ones that were cracked or broken, broke them all out, put some more mortar in, and uh, we cut bottles to fit in there, which was a challenge at times, but it was fun. It was rough. And, uh, yeah. Uh, but we got them all done, we cut the bottles, which I'd never done before, that was neat. And uh, we uh, mortared them in and blended it in and stuff. That you can still see uh, where they're at because they're not dry yet. But once these dry good, it should blend right in. So That's it. And one more thing. And he did one more thing here, and I'm going to let you go. I'm going to let him tell you what he did. Here. I got to sign the wall like everybody does when they come here. Uh, I just put my name and I uh, put Viva Terlingua, which everybody remembers from the Jerry Jeff Walker album, right? Anyway, uh, one of the things is you get to permanently put your stuff on here and uh, join the wall. All good. Hey, you hold on down there. Oh, where's Cascade? Have you seen Cascade? Where's Cascade? Cascade! Ca oh, there's Cascade! Hey. All right, guys, we're back here by the Lair of the 300, and that's because that's where I'm going to finish up the video, um, the vlog, in a couple um, in a couple minutes. Right now, uh, Jeff's getting ready to head for home, and so we're going to cut, let Jeff go home, and then I'm going to then I'll come back and finish the video. But you know, I just had a thought as I was walking this over here. Uh, I didn't count everybody, but Jeff probably makes about 15 that have been here, I, th I think, because there's about three that uh, didn't make it on the, on the wall. Um, but Jeff makes about 15 that have been here. Every single person that's been here has been great, except that one couple. I'm tired of beating them to death with a stick. 
But um, I'm getting the idea that, that people are wanting to change. People are wanting to, um, you know, you're out there living the life and you're going to work every day and you're working on your life debt and you're worrying about your career and you're doing this and, you know, and, and you're going nuts and you don't have a real goal or schedule or you don't have anything with any real relevance back here in the primal part of your brain. Yeah, your every minute is jammed up with something and you're working hard to survive instead of killing something and dragging it home, you're killing Benjamin Franklin's and dragging them home. But it's just different. And more and more of you guys are feeling that back here in the primal part of your brain and you're saying, you know, I kind of miss even though you never might not have ever experienced it, I kind of miss that 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 whatever it is that, that that's back in my genetic memory of of going out, killing something, dragging it home, eating, cleaning it out, burping, and then just sitting there and either going "Hey, baby" or going to sleep. You're missing that, and more and more of you are coming out here, and more and more of you are coming out here wound up tighter than Dick's hat band, and then all of a sudden, by the time you leave, it's like. <laughs> The life is great. That's what Jeff did. That's what everybody seems to be doing. And that's why I changed the focus here from the Eco Ranch. Almost like that guy two and a half miles over from me that's going, look at me, look at me, look at me. And that's kind of what I felt like I was doing. Change the focus from being that guy to let me teach you. Let me show you how to relax, how to unwind and do this stuff. Uh, and I did it so I could do these videos and do this stuff. And, and if you guys like it, let me know, number one, let me know what you like and don't like. If you think you want to come out here and visit, by all means come out here and visit. Just don't surprise me. I'm an old man and I get crotchety if you surprise me. But by all means come and visit. And of course, as usual, what's he going to say next? Go to the main page and up in that corner is a donate button. We can always use that, especially after feeding these 300 for so long. And with that, I'm going to uh, let Jeff go out of here. He's got a long drive home, and I'm going to come back. We'll talk about the 300 for a couple minutes and a couple of electrical problems I'm having. And that'll be this vlog. Jeff being a, um, his career is um, um, in video, essentially, and, and there's a lot more to it than that. But uh, he suggested I try to do these weekly, that I'll increase the audience. And I do need the audience increased. So, you know, if you guys know somebody that might be interested, tell them about the channel. And I'll be back in a couple, uh, for you a few seconds. Well, it's a new day. Hey, I got a blue shirt on. I got a couple of these I have to wear out before I can switch over all pink, so uh, blue shirt. One of the things that um, Jeff did while he was here, Jeff's a videographer and that's what he does for a living and it's more complicated than that, but he had a very simple solution, he thought, for the wind noise that keeps attacking my microphones. And he essentially super glued some of Cascade the Wonder Dog's hair in front of my microphones, hoping that that would cut it down. So those of you that don't like the wind noise, it pops up occasionally because I'm sure you've all looked around. It's some in some spots here. It's like 25 miles to the nearest hill. So if the wind comes, I've got no control over it, and I keep apologizing because I have no control over it. And right now, the way money is. I'm not buying, a, I can't buy a wireless microphone, first of all. I have to buy a whole new video camera because that video camera has no ports in it. Jeff explored every option. Now the, the wind is coming up a little bit right now. We'll see if it works, but Jeff did try to do what he could. The only other solution for me is to buy a new digital camera and, you know, we're just not going to do that right now. Not if I'm asking him in a video for donations to help buy Portland, I'm not going to run out and buy a new video camera or donations for a router, which by the way, that's part of what I have to do, uh, is to show you the router and show you what we've done with the router. But uh, this is a vlog and it's kind of an informational vlog for those, really those about 500 of you that always check my videos and thank you. Thank you by the way. Very, very honestly, it's you guys coming and checking the videos and watching them and commenting that keeps me kind of going and pumped up and everything. And I'm going to ask you, not for money, but I'm going to ask you to help me out with something else in this vlog in a couple minutes. Right now I'm going to turn it off, then turn it back on when I get a little bit better organized on the three or four things I want to go over um, in this. So, um, um, you know, for you a couple of seconds for me until my 
Till my brain gets organized. Okay, let's talk about the router. Um, that was something that uh, truly shocked me, and I'm still um, I, I'm very humbled by it still. Um, there were two people. I don't give names. Someone said, well, who gave you the money? I, I, I don't give names of you folks unless I know it's okay. And then I won't say, well, this guy donated a bunch of money. I'll say he gave me this or this. Um, so anyway, it was two folks, two, two different people. Both of you guys must be must be handymen or carpenters or whatever because you knew that the $100 um, router that I thought I needed or that I figured I could get by with wasn't going to do the job, especially on tongue and groove. You knew I didn't. They sent me uh, combined enough money to buy this very nice three horsepower router. It's got what's called a soft start. That means when I turn the on switch on, it's got like a one, one and a half second delay before it turns on and then the RPMs come up oh, over a second, I think, all the way up to wherever I've got it set, set. So that when I turn it on, it doesn't do this and twist me away or it doesn't come on when I turn the switch and I gotta get my other hand down here. Really a nice, very nice feature to it. It is a plunge router and I didn't want a plunge router, but the good ones are plunge routers. Now I was able to use that along with these um, katana, these katana tongue and groove bits that I had uh, that I had bought before to um, to do the tongue and groove groove. And I want to show you the tongue and groove and why it was an issue. So I was able to get the um, I was able to get the uh, the cheap Chinese quarter inch tongue and groove to work. Uh, but here's an example of what the now I was trying to cut the um, the tongue. Yes, I was trying to cut the tongue here. That's an attempt at a tongue cut. Notice what it would happen. Notice here how thin the second one is, the one I'm pushing with my finger, and then the third one here. Um, you see how thin they are, how uneven they are? That's the tongues that... Well, somebody just laid an egg. That was the tongue that I, um, that I was getting. Um, I was going to try to make it work and probably would have made it work, but um, let me show you the grooves. You can already see the grooves here. First of all, before I show you the grooves, this is the tongue that the katana and the new router did. You can see very nice tongue. And that's the big cut is the tongue because it's cutting up here and down here. So you got two blades spinning. Very nice. Now, one of these is a little bit bowed, and, and that I know. And I just, un, you know, I, as I'm assembling the, um, as I'm assembling these on the door, I'll be pushing them in properly. Now, here's the big thing. Here's the groove. Now, this groove down here is a little narrow because this board is bowed, but uh, the groove is also nice and clear. Um, it, I mean, I, I can't say enough about this uh, this router set. Now, as I said, these fellas were uh, obviously handymen or um, just knew what I was going in, uh, in for here. So there was a little bit extra, and I could have put it on the, spend it on Portland, and nobody would have fussed. But the money was sent for the router, so I was able to get an inexpensive set of half-inch router bits um, that will do all the things we need to do to finish the, the house with. Now, hopefully they are inexpensive, so they'll dull quickly but hopefully they'll, they'll work good enough for me. And then there was just a few dollars left, and I have always wanted a speed square. I want something to knock them chickens in the head with. I've always wanted a speed square, uh, because I see Tommy Silva on this old house doing all sorts of things with it. So I was able to get myself a speed square with it. So you two gentlemen, thank you. Thank you very much for your help. And those of you that inquired, um, it's almost a professional setup now. It's actually the most expensive that I would have been able to afford, which is my Uncle Homer's number one rule when buying a tool. He's don't even look at the tool, look at the price and buy the most expensive one that you can afford. And if you buy the best, you'll never be disappointed. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, everybody, for thinking about it. And those of you like me that don't have money to donate, hey, I understand. I've been in that position for a long, long time. 
Uh, let's hope we can all get out of that position and hopefully by studying what we teach here, how to live first of all debt free, live like no one else now so you can live like no one else later, that's Dave, Dave Ramsey, um, and uh, sustainable, re what are the three R's? Reuse, repurpose, recycle. That'll get you there. It'll get me there once I finish the building. So let's move on to something else. Okay, I purposely put you in the wind, a little bit of wind that's blowing, so let's hear how the uh, cascade hair on the microphone works. But we're just about done with the vlog. Um, I'm sitting here, by the way, on my apple wood. Um, Jeremy was kind enough to cut the uh, one into, be into a beam that'll make a beautiful lintel. I've got uh, three more I'm going to work with here. <laughs> Unfortunately, the guy cutting the lintel is going to be me, and that took Jeremy an entire day. I don't know how he had the patience to stand there with that electric chainsaw all day long. Uh, but anyway, this is a job I have in front of me uh, for the next oh, couple weeks. We're not taking any work exchange people until at the earliest September 21st. Now, I just picked that day because it's the first day of fall. Hey, pal. Hey, Cascade the Wonder Dog comes by. Uh, we're not doing it because um, everybody, the last two people that have come through, which was skinny, skinny little Alex and a little bit larger um, Jeff, they both had trouble with the heat, and so did I. Uh, no, it has nothing to do with the size of your body or the shape you're in. It has all. It has everything to do with hydration, 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 and exposure to the heat. And I know I don't want to put anyone in danger here. This experience should be a fun experience. I don't want it to be life-threatening for anyone. So we're cutting off any visitors until um, September 21st, and I've got people actually pretty much tentatively set up through the middle of October. Uh, but I did want to mention that in case some of you were watching, you do not have to be a woofer or a help exer to come here. You just have to be somebody who wants to learn sustainable living because, by God, you'll leave here knowing about it because I never shut up, as you can tell. Um, now, I had asked you, I said I was going to ask you to help me out with something. You know, there's, I'm one of the smaller um, channels on YouTube. Uh, I've got mm, some 9,000 followers, but really, boy, his hair is itchy. But really, only about 600 of you that really follow um, very closely. I do have some videos that get way up in the thousands, but they've got controversial or very interesting titles. Like, if it's a chicken video and it's by me, it's got some great information in it. You can take that to the bank, because that's my specialty is chickens. But everything else, you know, there's everybody out there. Everybody's got a shtick. They've all got these fine video, ed video editing programs that I don't have. You know, some guy's shticks that he, that he always is riding on his horse. Another guy, another couple, they're dressed up like they're Amish wannabes and... Uh, uh, you know, you've got all you've got all these people doing different things. My guy, two and a half miles away from me, uh, he's obsessed with uh, with the rabbits that eat all our cactuses, and so he's putting up video after video of rabbits. So everybody's got a shtick. I don't know why rabbit. These rabbits they kill the cactuses and eat all of your plants. So I don't know why anybody would want to feed them. But anyway, anyway, um, everybody's got a shtick. I don't have a shtick unless you call Cascade the Wonder Dog. A shtick. I guess he is. What I want to do, though, is I'd like to increase the viewership. I'd like to get a little bit more exposure, especially since we want to teach you. We want you to come here, and we want to be able to teach you, and I'm actually developing curriculums. I'm writing my first book, on, um, uh, and it's going to be on my comparison between the Cornish crosses and the regular uh, chickens. It will sell for $20.00. Uh, you can pre-buy it now for twenty dollars. It's going to go out in an ebook form for twenty bucks. It's going to go out in a written form for twenty bucks. And uh, yeah, it didn't cost twenty bucks. You're helping to support me with that twenty bucks uh, instead of just giving me money for free. At least you'll buy the book. It's a little pricey, not too pricey though. Uh, but I'm writing the first book right now on that. We are going to be working on the educational center. I need to reach more people, and the way to reach more people is going to get some of the activists that are out there. The celebrities whose names you know, like Ed Begley Jr., who, by the way, doesn't have any real contact information. I'm trying, I'd love to have Ed Begley Jr. come out here because I know in his heart that he's sincere, but he's got agents and contracts, and he's got some sort of a marketing company that provides public speakers, and they want to know what the uh, price range for my... Um, my event is, and it starts at $5,000. Well, none of us are going to put $5,000 into listening to Ed Begley speak. He's a great guy, great information, but not $5,000 worth. 
Uh, Brad Lancaster from Rainwater Harvesting for Dry Lands and Beyond. He will work with me anytime I want him to come out here. Great guy. If you get a chance, buy his books. By all means, it's Rainwater Harvesting. Dot com, I think it might be dot org, but it's rainwater harvesting, all one word, rainwaterharvesting.com dot org. Brad Lancaster, he'll come out here. I'm just not ready to have him come out, but I, I wasn't ready, but I am now. I've got a venue, I've got two venues here in Terlingua where we can have the speakers come. I'd like for you folks, you five, six, seven hundred of you that are the ones that watch this stuff, pick one. Ed Begley Jr., um, uh, Bill McKibben, Bill McKibben's a great one. Um, Brad Lancaster, and, and write them, pick up somebody of your own, anybody of your own. Hell, I'd have Sylvester Stallone come out here, and I'd put on boxing gloves with him and let him not beat, my, beat, beat my butt, which he could do anyway. I don't have to let him. He could do that. I'd have Stallone come out here if it would help raise awareness for this. I'd love to have Kurt Russell come out and Billy Moomy, that guy who beat me for the last spot in the Musketeers back in 1958. Love to have him come out too. Any of them, because it raises awareness, brings their fans to look at it, and we can all run from there. Any changes you'd like to see me make in the vlogs uh, or anything we're doing around here, do let me know. The vlogs are going to come out weekly, and I'm probably going to do a live stream. Uh, that was one of the things Jeff insisted on was a live stream. He said weekly vlogs, bring them out at a certain day, and live stream. Uh, so we're gonna, I'm going to look into both of those, but do get a celebrity in your mind, your favorite celebrity, even if it's Jennifer Aniston, uh, just pick your favorite celebrity, write them and say, hey, something you need to visit, something you need to look at is the Eco Ranch Sustainable Living Education Center. Put it on their Facebook page, put it on their Instagram, put it on their Twitter. <sighs> yeah, I don't know, twits are on Twitter. Uh, but anyway... <laughs> help me out. Try to get us some more people looking into it. I'd like to get a little bit of either low level or a, a, hey, I'll take A, B, C, or D celebrities. You know, there's no such thing as a has been, but there's a hell of a lot of never was's. Remember that the next time you take some guy that you say, yeah, he was in a few things, but he's a has been because he hadn't done anything in a while. He was there once upon a time. No such thing as a has been because he was there. But there's a lot of never was -es. Don't be a never was. At least try and do something. Make a difference. Get out there. Change the world because the world has been changed. Sometimes for the bad, a lot of times for the good. We need to do some changing right now. And I want you and me to be a part of the movement. Don't want to be the leader. We're all the leader. We want to be the movement. I need your help. And until then, the next vlog, which won't be as short and won't be as personal as this one, it'll show you the stuff we're doing, which will be that door. I'm concentrating on that door. It is Robert Earl and Cascade the Wonder Dog. Oh, one more thing. Sherman, the toothless one-eyed dog, uh, has had a couple little spots right back here on his back that I knew were um, you know, pre-cancer, skin cancer. One of them has erupted. We don't think it's malignant, but he's going to be having surgery. It's going to, it's going to take quite a bit of money to do the surgery on the 9th of August. So um, you know, inquire about him on the 9th of August. We're going to have the surgery. Even if it's malignant and they can't, um, can't remove the whole thing, we had another dog that had skin cancer because the hairless are very susceptible to it. We had another hairless with it that had probably 15 surgeries. That dog outlived. He outlived the cancer. He was the longest lived American hairless terrier that I'm aware of at 15 years, nine months, and he died quietly in my arms of old age, not of skin cancer. So uh, we're, gonna get, uh, we're gonna get Sherman, the one-eyed toothless dog, his surgery, let you know what goes on with that. That's gonna happen the ninth. And hopefully um, after the ninth, I'll be sitting here with him and introducing myself as uh, Robert Earl with Cascade the Wonder Dog, Sherman the One-Eyed Toothless Dog, and welcome to the Eco Ranch Sustainable Living Education Center. But until then, I'll see you guys later. What do you think? Was that okay? Food? All right, food.